Alright, today we're going to be going over the 2008 Lexus LS460. Uh, we're going to be taking the radio out. So the first thing we need to do, power this trim out here. We've got a pry tool right here. I'm using a metal one, but you can use a plastic one. They're a little bit more safe, especially on these older cars. And you'll see there's just a few clips on there. It's nothing crazy. Next step is taking off this side and this side. So all you gotta do is just pull towards you, push it to the radio side, and then pull out, or push out this way. You'll see these clips are actually stacked this way, whereas these are just push in. So you'd have to insert it and then push when we put it back together. I'll show you on this side as well. Push it to the radio, pry out, and then push. That side will come out. It's the same thing on this side right here. Same clips, these pushing ones here. Next step is going to be taking off the shifter. You just unscrew it counterclockwise. Then you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. There's going to be two screws, one right here, one right here. They connect to the shifter assembly. All right, just those two screws there. I'll take our pry tool and we're just going to pry up on this whole assembly right here. You see there's a clip right here so I tend to pry around the clips. One there, one there, one further back. Same thing on the other side. Pull this whole thing up. There's going to be a few cables you can disconnect here or you can just set it to the side. For this video, we're just going to disconnect them. As you can see, there's four that you have to disconnect. They all have a release on them right here. You just release and kind of wiggle it, it'll come loose. After that, we can go ahead and pull out this piece here. It's just got the cigarette lighter in it. All you need to do is get your hand underneath it and kind of pull up. If you have a pry tool as well, like we were using earlier, you can put it in right here. I'm just kind of pry that up. I'm just going to wiggle it loose. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Nothing crazy. We've got one more plug here as well. This one's a little bit more difficult to undo. As you can see, it's got the release tab on top as well. And then after we've got all that out, the next step is going to be the screws that hold in this bottom part. If you look right here, you'll see a hole right here. The screw is in here. So it's actually up there at an angle. I'm going to try to get the camera where you can see it. It should be right up in there. So I'm going to take the two screws out on the sides here that hold this in. Uh, to pull this out, we need to move the shifter back. So you'll see this little white release here. Press down on that, and then you can shift all the way down. After that, I like to go in the bottom corners here and kind of pry a little bit to get this to come out fully. And you'll see you can get it out up top here. Once you get that, it's a lot easier to fully get it pried out. Now that we got the radio out, or well, bottom unit, I'm go ahead and unplug everything here. As you can see, there's a bunch of plugs on there. You've got your two antennas here, a few plugs there. Just disconnect all those to get it out of the way. Now our last step is going to be getting this out. There's two screws that hold it in. Uh, unfortunately on this vehicle, they don't have those screws in. It's been taken out a couple times, I guess. Um, but we'll go ahead and show you where those screws are. So there's going to be one right here. You can see that. There's going to be one right here. 
They're both Phillips heads. They're very small screws. They're very easy to lose, uh, as you can tell by missing in this vehicle. Uh, once you've got those out, then it's just a simple matter of prying the radio out, or well, the display. You do want to be careful. As you can tell, this one's been cracked before. It's very susceptible to cracking up here. It's very thin, and the sun bakes them up here. But after you've pried it out, you can pull the whole thing out. And we'll just start disconnecting here as well. here and then we're just going to be making a few connections along here and we'll flip to that next all right so uh, for the flex 5 LS and the uh, LS 460 we're gonna be doing the GPS antenna now um, so the way that I like to put them is right here there's plenty of room for it to go straight up without any interference other than a little bit of plastic and glass which won't really affect it you just want to stay away from metal mainly uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down on this vent just a little bit I'm going to slide it up in here. Once you get over that hump, it's not too bad. Then you can push it back a little bit. And now we've got our GPS antenna right there. It's a little tight, which actually works out a little bit better. Um, kind of holds it in place with the, uh, the 3M tape as well as just the pressure itself. And then we're going to run our cable down. connectors behind the radio here. I've got my USB to run. I've got our vehicle specific harness here. And we've got our GBMF connectors right here. So let's go ahead and do the GBMF connectors. You can see we've got the GBMF right here. So we're going to plug the female in there. And we've got the male here, which is going to go into the display itself. Also be doing some cable management as well. And then we've got our 12 pin connector here. So we're going to grab that cable, which is right here, it actually goes to the bottom unit. And we're just going to insert it this way, like that, and this will plug into the bottom radio unit itself. Then we've got this reverse wire here, we're going to be tagging that to this plug. It's going to be going to the red wire on here. There's a few of them, so, so we've got our we will show here. you that. It's also in our wire strips as well, where it's end of it. So what I like to do is turn it around together so it's not frayed out everywhere. Unscrew this fully, put it on the wire. You'll see there's a tiny little bit of wire exposed there. You're just gonna push it in and twist. And if you pull slightly, I wouldn't pull too hard, but just a little bit of a tug just to make sure that it's fully seated in there and that it's good. Then you're gonna be taking this side we're going to be connecting it to this pin right here. It's this red wire here. If you look at this side, this is how our diagram is laid out in the instructions. So this would be pin number one all the way across. Uh, and then this would be, I believe, pin 13 is where we're connecting it. So we'll just pull that wire back a little bit, kind of get it separated from the rest of them. Then you're going to unscrew this bit. And you're just going to put it over the wire. And then we're just gonna tighten it on there. Now, uh, if you just tighten it just right away, you're gonna curl your wire up a bunch. It'll kind of get in the way. So I like to actually turn it the opposite way. So turn it counterclockwise. And then when I put it on there and turn it clockwise, it'll straighten itself back out. And tighten it onto the wire. And the way this works is there's a tiny little, almost needle inside of this and it pierces the wire and makes the connection so that way later on if you ever need to remove it you can uh, and then once you have it tightened all the way on there kind of give it a little bit of a tug just make sure it's on there and that's it
All right, guys, so I just wanted to let y'all know one quick tip. When you are using the P-Tap, sometimes they might not actually make a full connection. So it's something to look out for. Uh, we went ahead and tested this wire from the 20 pin harness. So as you can see here, we've got our purple wire right here. That's your reverse, that's the one we're tagging. And then we're checking against the ground here. So when I checked that, I was getting zero volts. We pulled it apart and we found that the P-Tap didn't make the most solid connection here. It actually went through the shielding, but not. it didn't touch the wire. It didn't go all the way through. So we're gonna attempt that one more time and then we're gonna test it from there. So I'd recommend if you guys have any issues with the V-Line actually popping up on the screen to double check that reverse wire. So as you can see, we just redid the P-Tap. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it back in park. Slide this back out of the way for a second. We've got our multimeter here. When we go into reverse now, we're getting 12 volts before we were getting zero. So just make sure you guys always double check that if you do have any screen recognition issues where it just comes up, shows the CD changer and says like track 25 or 30 or anything like that. Typically means the reverse wire isn't hooked up. Siri, give me directions to the closest coffee shop. The nearest one I found is Kung Fu Tea on Coit Road. 